Hello everyone and welcome to a special episode of Code Emporium where we're going to talk about likelihood. So likelihood is one of those terms where it is proportional to a probability but it is not quite a probability and it's pretty confusing. So we're going to walk through some intuition, walk through a formal definition, and then also we're going to work through a lot of math. And so I have my trusty pen here. So let's get to it. All right, so let's actually start this discussion by explaining the difference between probability and likelihood. So right now, I'm going to draw a 2D graph. We have the y-axis and the x-axis over here. And this x-axis, I'm going to say, is going to represent prices of houses. So let's say that this could be $200,000, then we have $400,000, then we have $600,000, and this x-axis just goes on. And then the y-axis is going to represent a probability, which I'm going to represent as p of x. And let's say that, you know, for some given population, we just know that the distribution of all house prices will look something like this blue curve, where you have a lot of examples that probably have middle to, to lower prices, but then there's like a few examples when you get to the tail end, that'll be like really expensive houses. And for all intents and purposes, let's say that this is going to be some log normal distribution or something very close to it, which means that, well, we can represent this here with a mean and a standard deviation, which we'll call mu and sigma. Now, because this is a probability distribution, we know that it can exhibit certain properties. Like one such property is that the total area under this blue curve is going to be one. So in fancy mathematical notation, we could write that as the integration over all x, and it's going to be the probability p of x dx. Now this entire integration for over all values of x is going to be one. And something else that we can also define with probability is, well, the range of values so for example, let's say that I'm gonna draw a line at 400K and I'm also gonna draw another line at around 300K. And we have this shaded region over here. Now one statement we can make now with probability is let's say that the area under this region in this yellow region is 0 0.35. So we can say the integration where the values of X lie between 300,000 and 400,000, the probability values, if you sum them up, dx, this is going to be 0 0.35. And so with the notion of probability, we can make statements like this, where it's basically saying, given some distribution, or rather, given like the mu and the sigma of some distribution, the probability that a house price is between 300,000 and 400,000 is 0 0.35. So that's kind of the notion of probability. But let me try to now relate this to likelihood by drawing the same exact graph. All right, so now I drew an x-axis of prices and a y-axis of probability values. And in this case, maybe the probability values are gonna be of the order 10 to the negative seven. So likelihood. Likelihood is essentially not a probability, but it is proportional to a probability. And what I mean and why it is actually useful is because in many situations, we're not given this blue curve. Like we don't know what the value of mu and sigma is. But instead, we are given data points where we might have like some houses, let's say one house is like $90,000, then we have a few houses in like the $200,000 range, and maybe a few, a little above 5,000, and then like some stray one close to a million way out here. Now, 
In this situation, let's just say at this point, we randomly want to find some distribution that fits this data. And in this case, we'll randomly assign the mu here and the sigma here to be some value. So I'm going to say, like, let's just say the mu, I'm gonna change this color to uh, a blue line. So this mu, let's just say that it's going to be 14 and the sigma is going to be 0 0.4, just for an argument's sake. Now in this situation, we might get a curve that looks something like this dotted line. Now, how well does this curve with a mu of 14 and a sigma of 0 0.4, how well does this curve fit this data? That is quantified by likelihood. And so we can write the likelihood function, I'm gonna call it L. The likelihood function is going to take as parameters the parameters of like the distribution itself and it's going to say, okay, the likelihood of like mu is equal to 14 and sigma is equal to 0 0.4 for this given data, let's say that it is 3.72, just for an argument's sake. Now we can also just play around with these mu and sigma values. They're parameters to some function anyways. So let's just say for another argument's sake, I'm gonna call it mu, let's change it to like 15 and sigma, we'll just, I don't know, we'll keep it at 0 0.3 or something like that. And in this case, we're, we might get a curve that looks something like this. And it's here that we can say maybe the likelihood that the mu is 15 and sigma is 0 0.3, how well this green curve essentially fits this blue data will be quantified by this function. And let's say that it's going to be 2.8. And similarly, we can have another function, we'll represent it with yellow, that looks something like this. And this could be like a mu is equal to 15.5, and then we have a sigma equal to 0 0.4. And we can say here, the likelihood function, that's the likelihood, like how well does this new distribution now fit the given data? This could be some, I don't know, 2.6. And what now this can tell us is, well, this, this number here, that is the 3.72, is the greatest of all of the three distributions for this data, which means that this blue distribution over here fits these data points the best. And you can kind of see here that in machine learning, we are given this exact same scenario where we are given data points like this, and we kind of want to find some distribution that fits the given data the best. And so I hope this is a little clear of like how likelihood is going to be different from a probability. With probability, we are given a distribution and we can make statements about the data. With likelihood, we are given the data and we can make statements, of, well, about how well the distribution fits the data by passing in these parameters. And so now let's talk about likelihood, but with a much more formal definition. Alrighty, so this definition of likelihood I took from a book that was written by a famous mathematician or statistician, Ronald Fisher. And in it, he defines likelihood very precisely as the likelihood that any parameter or a set of parameters should have any assigned value or set of values is proportional to the probability that if this were so, the totality of observations should be that observed. Let's break this down and convert it into some mathematical notation now. So the likelihood right here, the likelihood that any parameter, these are, this is, these are key words, uh, should have any assigned value. So let's, let's start with that. So right now, I'm going to change my color to this is the likelihood function. And any parameter or set of parameters is going to be the parameters of the distribution that we can set, right? So I'm going to toggle this with a green color. We'll call this mu and sigma in this case. So the likelihood that any parameter should have any assigned value. So if we assigned this to a value, let's say if we 
assigned this to be equal to like, I don't know, 14 and assigned this sigma to be equal to 0 0.3, then this value is going to be proportional to the probability that if this were so, so let's just break it down there. It's going to be proportional to the probability that if this were true, if the mu and the sigma were, if the mu was 14 and the sigma of the log normal distribution were 0 0.3, then the totality of the observations here would be that observed. So the totality of the observations would be all of the data points that were given. Typically in, I don't know, in machine learning, it's going to be like all of our training data, but even in the previous example, it's going to be the set of house prices. So that is going to be like Y1, Y2, Y3, and let's just say that there's, I don't know, some 10,000 examples and each of these would have assumed some value, right? Because this Y1 could have been, I don't know, some house price that's $238,000. And this Y2 over here could have been some house price which was $400,000. And like so, because all of these values would have assumed some house price. And this is all going to be the joint probability distribution that all of this is true. And typically we would also parameterize it. Well, all of this is given that we are observing mu and sigma. So that if this were true, I think it says here that if this were true, the totality of observations should be that observe. So if this were true, which means let's make this true, that is given the value of, well, mu and sigma. And these specifically are going to take on the values that we would have passed over on this side. So it's going to be 14 and 0 0.3. So that means that the likelihood that, well, let's say that we pass in a parameter of the distribution to be 14 and 0 0.3, this likelihood value is going to be proportional to the probability of observing all of these examples such that, well, we are assuming the actual distribution. That is, we are assuming the values that we passed are mu with 14 and sigma of 0 0.3. And so I hope that this definition now is becoming a little more clear and we're able to break this down into mathematics. Because from here on out, we're going to be using this in, well, the world of machine learning. So I hope this is clear. Let's now consider a machine learning problem where we want to predict the value of a house price given some information about the house. And this information could be information like square footage, or it could be number of bedrooms, the age of a house, and so many other factors. And all of this information, we want to model it, model it with, let's say, I don't know, a linear regression model. But it can be essentially any kind of model that has parameters, any parametric model. Now, in this situation, we would describe this model mathematically as y, which is the house price. This is going to be equal to... I'm going to call the parameters of this linear regression theta because that's quite standard notation. Theta 2 times, I'm going to start with the number of bedrooms. So I'll call it hashtag bedrooms. And we're going to add to this, let's say, theta 1 times, and we're going to call this other term, I don't know, let's say that we pass in the age of the house as well. And for now, let's just say that these are the only two parameters that we pass, but there could be plenty more. And we want to add to this a constant term. So I'm going to call it theta zero. 
And then we also have some epsilon, which is going to be an irreducible error, probably because of inherent model noise, or also because bedrooms and age are probably just not enough in order to predict um, the accurately, like what a house price could be. Now this here, this entire equation is typically called the hypothesis. All right, now to this linear regression hypothesis, let's actually see where the concept of likelihood really comes into the picture. So let's look at this function, which is L, and we know that the likelihood function is going to be a function of parameters. So that's theta zero, theta one, and theta two. Now, what this function over here is going to decide is it's going to quantify that if we were to set the value of theta zero, theta one, and theta two to some specific value, it's gonna give us a number. And that number will quantify how well this assumed distribution is going to fit that data. But when we're doing like machine learning and we're modeling, we don't wanna just find a number, we want to find the best number. We want to find the best fit of data. In other words, we want to maximize this likelihood function. And we're in essence not really concerned about the value of likelihood itself, but we are concerned with what are the values of theta that are going to maximize this function. And in mathematics, we determine that with arg max. We represent it with arg max. And what we want to do is we want to determine the values of theta zero, theta one, and theta two. That will, in essence, maximize the likelihood function. I'm going to now represent this with hats all these thetas with hats because in the end, they are estimations. And I'm also going to call it MLE to stand for maximum likelihood estimations. Because in essence, these are the values of the theta terms that maximize the likelihood function. I'm also going to add, just for the sake of completion of notation, theta zero, theta one, and theta two under the argmax, just to show that we are maximizing across the theta terms and any other term that comes in this likelihood function, whether it's a set of x's, that is the house information, or the set of prices, which is the y's, all of them should not, re they should remain constant with respect to this maximization. Now, this term here looks very cumbersome, and so we would typically minimize that or optimize this using, well, typically vectors. So let's just say, let the theta vector, we're gonna call it theta equal to theta zero, theta one, and theta two. And writing, rewriting now this equation, we can now rewrite it as, let's call it theta, is equal to arg max of the theta term. And we're going to write the likelihood function. And for the sake of completion, we're gonna put a hat and MLE to signify it is an estimation. And it is now this function that is going to be the basis of all calculations that we will make in this video and also typically of parametric models and how you would want to solve for parameters in a model with, well, maximum likelihood estimation, which is exactly what this technique is. It's very clear now that the likelihood function is useful in mathematics. So let's actually further break this down using the probability notation that we introduced when defining likelihood. So we know that the likelihood 
of, let's say, now we can say theta because we know that the parameters are represented by theta. This is going to be proportional to the probability of, let's say our training data is a set of house prices. So I'm going to represent that with y1, which is some value, and then y2, and so on until y10,000, because we had 10,000 training examples. And in standard notation, we are given the values of theta. So this is standard notation. These values can take on some house prices, and this is some assumed value that we would, we would just like plop in. But we can assume house prices are independent of each other. And in math notation, we call this IID, that is independently and identically distributed, which means that a house price does not depend on another house's price in our 10,000 example data set, which is a very standard assumption to make. And because of this, we can now write this pro probability, which is a joint probability distribution in terms of individual product pr of probability distributions. And so I represent the individual probabilities with a small p over here. And now we can represent this in a more concise notation with the product symbol. Where we range i is equal to 1 to 10,000 and then take a product of all of these product terms. Now this is a good notation right now. But computationally speaking, this can lead to something called arithmetic underflow. And why this is the case is, let's assume that you know this price over here is going to be a probability. So it's gonna be some number between zero and one. Let's say that it is, I don't know, for the sake of the argument, 0 0.83. This one over here is going to be something like 0 0.74. This one over here is going to be 0 0.56. And when you're taking the product of multiple numbers that are under one, you are going to get a value that is going to be extremely close to zero. So close to zero that computers these days just won't have the precision to deal with those numbers. And so this term is not easily manageable. And in order to deal with this situation, we would like to convert it into some summation form. And we can do that by taking the logarithms on both sides. And so you'll get a term that looks like this, where I've just taken the logarithm and put it in brackets. Now, if you expand the logarithm here, you're going to get a log of products, but we know that that's going to be the same as a sum of logs. And so now we write the summation symbol across all values of i, and it's at this point that we take the logarithm into our brackets here, and we're gonna put a big bracket and it's going to be the log or sum of logs of the individual probabilities here. Now, this is a, a very important equation here because what we really care about, remember in the beginning, was the original values of theta that maximize this likelihood function. So we really just cared about this equation. And we know that this is basically, we need to maximize the likelihood function. Now, something that we can kind of look here is that the value of likelihood over here is proportional to this term here. And so they have the same maximum. 
In fact, something I didn't mention before was that we're able to take logarithms on both sides for proportionality because they logarithms are monotonically increasing, which means that for a given a greater than b, then this implies that the log a should be greater than log b. And this is the property of monotonically increasing functions. And so right now, the value of theta that maximizes the likelihood is going to be the value of theta that maximizes this log likelihood, which, because it's now proportional to this term, it's going to be the value of theta that maximizes the sum of log probability values. And so if we were to simplify this term, we would get the value of theta that gives us the maximum likelihood estimation. And this can be used in our parametric model. Now from here, like how do we actually simplify this? Well, I'm not gonna work out all of that in this video and that can probably be for future videos, but essentially it all hinges on this, clearly this probability distribution value, right? And for linear regression, we would make the assumption that this is normally distributed. And because of that, we have like the probability density function for a normal distribution that we would write out and simplify. And it's actually fun because if you do that as an exercise, you'll see that it becomes the residual sum of squares. And similarly, if you do this for logistic regression, you can use this would now probability function would now turn into the sigmoid function and the link function. And you'll use concepts such as like, if it were a binary classification, you know that if the probability of it being in one class is the probability of, is the inverse probability of it being in another class. So that's one minus probability of the other class. And when you would use those kind of statistical tools and statistical rules in order to simplify this function and eventually get the value of theta. But for all intents and purposes, this is a lot better starting point because now it no longer suffers from arithmetic underflow. And I hope now it is clear how maximum likelihood estimation and in just general, the concept of likelihood is very useful in statistical modeling. And I hope you enjoyed this video. There's going to be a blog post that accompanies this video too. So if it's not there as soon as it's uploaded, it'll be there eventually very soon. Thank you all for listening and I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye-bye.